All right, everyone. How's everyone doing? My name is Josh Dubois of JD Strategic. We got the fresh new background going. We are on episode six of the Conquer the Mind podcast. We got a special guest, Matt, with Naturals to Go today. So Matt spent 20 years of his life in the media industry in corporate America, most of his time as a multimedia sales executive with ESPN. So really excited to dive into his background at ESPN, very cool position that he held. Um, and I think the marketing, the sales background is just so relatable to anything that people do today. So he left corporate world in 2015. And after exploring a variety of different franchises, um, Matt decided to launch his own Next Step Franchise Advisors, which is a franchise consulting company dedicated to helping people achieve their goal of business ownership, which is really one of the goals of the podcast, really helping people take control of their future, really just be educated on all these different opportunities. So after placing multiple people with Naturals to go as a franchise consultant, Matt was actually became a business owner of Naturals to go. So he is an owner operator of Naturals to go. And later on, Naturals to go even recruited him um, where he's in his current position today doing franchise development for Naturals to go as a business consultant. So Naturals to Go is a healthy snack and beverage division of Ventec, which is the fastest growing, longest running. Um, I could go on and on with fancy adjectives here because it really is the top of the industry of vending machine opportunities in the United States. They have a fully integrated, all-inclusive turnkey program, which is really what everyone's so fascinated about today. So today we're going to dive into really Matt's background what Naturals to Go is, the opportunity, what they're looking for, and really just educate people on the opportunity and a little bit about Matt's background. So usually I like to start these off, especially as kind of a young entrepreneur. And I think your background, especially in corporate America for really 20 plus years is really very interesting. But if you could just start off kind of in high school as kind of a young entrepreneur, I feel like one of the goals of the podcast is just a lot of people, especially graduate from college, don't necessarily know what they want to do, still feel kind of lost in life. Um, and I feel like even a lot of successful people, they were in that similar position where they didn't necessarily have it all figured out from the start. Or maybe you may have had it all figured out from the start, but as we were kind of just joking about, no one really knows about franchising um, from an early age unless their family was involved in franchising. So we'll get into franchising later on, but can you just start off like in high school, what was kind of the environment you were surrounded with? Were the people around you successful? What was kind of the path growing up? Were you always kind of business minded? What did that look like? Yeah, good stuff. And thanks for having me on this. I love the logo. Uh, and this is a this is a great opportunity. Uh, to get that. I, I don't know how many iterations it took for you to get to that, but it looks perfect behind your head. Well done. <laughs> um, so it's funny you asked me to go back to high school. Here's an interesting one. So I grew up in Queens, New York, uh, as you can tell from my Southern accent. And I went to Archbishop Malloy High School, which is the home of both Kenny Smith and Kenny Anderson, uh, who was there uh, playing high school basketball when I was there. So I got to see some oh, wow. fantastic, fantastic high school basketball. But uh, the good part of being in a school like that, uh, not, not only was it just competitive, but there were a lot of smart kids there. And I think we were all ingrained at a young age to work. So my first job was a 125 uh, house paper wrap. I think that's usually everybody's job. Yeah. So, so think about it. Seven days a week, I was up at five o'clock in the morning delivering papers. Rain, snow, sleet, it didn't matter. But I think that taught me a lot about having responsibility, dealing with customers, you know, trying to provide excellent customer service, relating to people who were sometimes 20, 30 years older than me. I mean, it was a great job. Mm. I also had a job mowing lawns in a cemetery. Um, so one might think of that as uh, not being the most desirable place to work, but it was my first taste of being in a union um, yeah. and being with people who said, hey, it's break time, let's go. We went as a group come back and do stuff. So it was a great experience sort of getting me set for, for college. But still, I think like a lot of people, came out of high school not knowing what I wanted to do. I thought I did, but I really didn't know 
uh, what I wanted uh, coming out. That makes sense. Is that a good story? No, that's all. That's very helpful. And that's interesting. You're the back, the basketball background, Kenny Smith and Kenny Anderson. Um, even as a younger entrepreneur, I'm very aware of those guys. Basketball was actually growing up. I kind of, one of my goals growing up was to play basketball overseas. Um, but as I kind of, kind of reality hit me that I really wasn't that great. You know, I put in the hours, I put in the practice, but you know, I just, the talent just wasn't there when the games came down <laughs> and perform. And I think Listen, that's, that's okay. The same thing with 97% of the other high yeah. school athletes out there. I get it. No, and I think that's a really great point, kind of just building upon what you said with having all these seven days a week jobs from such an early age, where I think a lot of kids, my generation and, you know, myself included, where we graduate when we're 20 and we spend a lot more time kind of on our cell phone than really out in the real world. And I think those, even those jobs that you're not passionate about, but, you know, you're forced to do seven days a week. I think it just gives you such a valuable perspective. And then when you do probably graduate from college, you know, you have a sense of, you know, you want to do some other things with your life. So I'd be curious and also just being surrounded with those athletes, being surrounded with kind of people that did, were they kind of very successful in high school as well? And were you kind of surrounded by all these successful people? And did it kind of motivate you to kind of where you are today? Yeah, I, it definitely did. It definitely did. You know, the, the school had a very good reputation. You know, you needed uh, high scores to get in there. So I was surrounded with people that, you know, all went off to the Ivy Leagues and the junior Ivies and, you know, the top rated uh, schools. Now, mm. that was that was all well and good. For me, from a, somewhat of a humble background, I knew I was going to a state school, right? So I wound up going to the University of Buffalo, uh, first and foremost, because uh, it was more affordable and that was my option. But I think my experience uh, with seeing uh, the opportunities that people did have in the colleges that I went to, and also with my work experience, I knew that I went to college that I was always looking for the next opportunity. Um, and I think, you know, and I, I sort of bestowed this to my kids uh, when they were in school was don't you don't necessarily have to know what you want to do when you go in. It's taking full advantage of what that school is going to offer you. First thing it offers you is a variety of classes to be able to take to broaden your knowledge and help you come out of your shell. And that's exactly what I did. You know. Some would joke, and my family loves to joke with me, but I took everything from basic acting to racquetball oh, to wow. cartography to deductive logic and currency arbitrage and everything in between because I just wanted to try to sample everything so that I can get some sort of inspiration for uh, what I want to do later in life. Uh, and it was enjoyable. My four years of college were some of the best, the, I'd say the best time period and which is it supposed to be, but it really did expose me to um, different career tracks that were out there, uh, uh, different people, different ways of thinking about things, and also different internship opportunities that I had, uh, different uh, uh, independent studies that I was able to take advantage of. And it sort of all helped me culminate at the end of college, coming out, not knowing what I wanted to do. That's powerful. Like everybody though. else. Yeah, you're trying all these different things, though, and it just kind of continues to relate to this idea of, you know, when you try these different things, you have to you have a better understanding of what you want to do nowadays. And a lot of times I was kind of just reading a lot about anxiety and it's a kind of because you have so many different options, especially nowadays, we're surrounded by 100 different options. I always kind of joke about, especially as kind of a younger person, you're trying to figure out, all right, where's the money for a career path and just like real estate, crypto, NFTs, finance, all these different routes. So people always kind of just say, you know, I'm going to do real estate, I'm going to do this, but the money is really, you know, where you want to put the work and where you can provide that value, those services. And it's just so beneficial when you try those different things out and, you know, just not having regret and kind of wondering, you know, would I have liked this? Would I have liked that? And that's so funny. You're doing racquetball, acting, how long of a time frame were you doing each of these things? Was it like a week here, a week there? Were you doing it for like months at a time and you were like really figuring out, you know, do I like this? Do I like that? Or walk us through kind of how you're trying all these different things and then 
as college progressives, do you start to head down a business path or how do all these different things kind of affect where you are now? Right. So, so again, those were, those were all classes I took. So those yeah. were semester long experiences in okay. all different disciplines. And look in there was also thing about film. I had psychology classes, sociology, all down the line. But at the end of the day, I ultimately started to gravitate towards business and I wound up coming out of college with an economics degree. Mm -hmm. um, but what I learned in being involved on campus and with the people I met is that I had an ability to talk to people. Um, mm -hmm. So I knew at some point that I was gonna get into sales or business development in some okay. way, shape. Uh, and that's what we have. So when I, cut, when I got out of school, you know, my generation, it was all about, all right, you're getting a job and you work, that's it. So you get your job, and you only have to get your first job once to right. get it and then focus in on what you're going to do afterwards. So I got my first job. I actually started down on Wall Street um, in a support role. And I knew very quickly that's not where I wanted to be. That wasn't the environment. So I wound up going back to business school to get my MBA. And I got my MBA in marketing. Although I was in a school that was primarily finance driven, NYU, yeah. I did wind up with a marketing degree. And that I loved that creative side of the business because it was all about connecting with the consumer, coming up with strategies in order to do that. And it was all the tent poles that are within marketing, advertising, promotion, merchandising, down the line that I started to love and gravitate towards. Yeah. Um, and then that was it. So once I got out of there, it was about, okay, how am I gonna parlay that into my next move? And that was it. I think you said something really powerful there about how you, you know, needing like 40 years to kind of do something, um, kind of trying to figure it out kind of life as you get that first job coming out of college. I'm kind of thinking back to my days and as my sister's graduating college and I know you have um, family that's from UF just like me and getting that first job, there's just so much pressure. You know, you send out your resume to so many companies trying to, you know, even just hearing back from a company that they rejected you is like kind of a sigh of relief. You know, usually you kind of get ghosted and, you know, it's kind of different where, you know, I feel like a couple of decades ago, even a few years ago, there was so much pressure because, you know, really the goal is to spend 40 years at a company and really retire at that company, you know, start, start in the ladder room, work your way up to the, literally being a corporate executive. And I think, like you said, not having, feeling all that pressure that like, your life relies upon that first job because, you know, as you kind of talk about trying all these different things, having that marketing background, it just leads you to being able to figure out kind of what you want to do. So I think that was a very powerful thought as it took me a while to kind of put my thoughts together there. But I think that was just something powerful that I really wanted to highlight um, that I think a lot of people kind of go through that similar path. And, you know, you just try these different things and things start to line up and, you know, these marketing roles, these sales roles, they just relate so much to everything that people do, these 